Hi, I'm James Dunn. Welcome to the Inside Network. Joining us today from Hong Kong to discuss towards carbon neutral and emerging market investing is Rob Mumford, the investment manager at GAM. Rob's a member of the emerging market equity team with over 25 years experience in emerging markets across a range of asset classes. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Well, let's first start with the big picture. Emerging markets have had numerous challenges throughout the course of this year, dealing with COVID, the regulatory changes in China, supply chain disruptions. What's your current view about where things sit? Yeah, we're reasonably positive. I, th I think the key overriding theme is, you know, I think we are entering into a higher inflation environment. Uh, and traditionally, emerging markets have, have been a good place to, to be exposed for that. In fact, we go to the point that actually it's, it's emerging markets offer optimal exposure for inflation hedge. Uh, and there's a few different areas to that. I think, you know, the key really is, is, is pricing power and brand power. And if we think about the key challenges in, in, in the current environment, it's really about decarbonization driving restricted supply of key materials. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about technology. If you talk about foundry, who dominates foundry? Well, certainly Taiwan and in Asia. Um, they have significant pricing power for a product that, that's massively going to be in demand because of the digitization of everything. And then if we move beyond that in terms of, sort of key materials for the decarbonized world, well, you know, that there's restricted supply. And, and again, in terms of where some of these key raw materials are based, well, again, it's emerging markets. And then if we look in the traditional format of, of, of raw commodity, think about soft commodities, think about palm oil, and just restriction of land, water usage, or, or just simply government policy, uh, again, where do you get the best exposure to these types of commodities? So as you, as you said at the outset, EM this year has been challenging. It's, it's really be, though been very nuanced. We think of EM as, as one generic mass when, when we invest in it, but actually it's not, as we know. You know we invest in 27 different countries. Um, and within that, you know, five to 15 different sectors. And the interesting thing post COVID is that when you talk about a country, actually it's just massive divergence within that, that country in terms of what's performed well and what hasn't. Um, and what we see uh, right now in EM generally is obviously anything connected to particularly developed world uh, industrial production. So we're thinking obviously North Asia, Taiwan, Korea, actually they've performed extremely well. Uh, and the other end of the scale, India, um, more domestic focused, however, with a very expansionary QE policy, you know, that market's up 30%. So parts of EM, and we've talked about countries, but again, even in, this, in, the, in the areas like, like China, so China's basically gone through the normalization cycle, which the US has just started. So they started normalizing policy for Q of last year. And as it always happens in China, it's tend to be accompanied by industry reform. Now the industry reform and the regulatory reform this year has been, has been more aggressive and more, more widespread than usual. And that's partly because it's really the first phase of the, the regulation of the digital economy. But net net has been you know, quite a significant policy driven normalization of policy. And, and, that's, and that's brought the market um, down this year and, and it's brought in aggregate EM down to, to very interesting valuations. So where EM sits right now is, is you know, it's, it's essentially a P of about 12, 12 times, which, which basically means an earnings yield of 8%. It's got a dividend yield for next year forecast for over 3%. And as we said from the outset, it's, it's, it's actually a beneficiary of probably higher inflation. Yeah. So you know, we're, we're, we're extremely positive. Um, clearly, as US rates normalize, you know, there might be some volatility in the currency. Um, but, but net net, we think that you know, the, the, in EM in general appeals to to all types of investors. There's there's still lots of growth with all the emerging platforms that we've talked about. There's plenty of value, particularly in areas like China, where you know, basically the, the tail end, as you always see at the tail end of a tightening cycle, the areas that have come under pressure. Um, and you've got you know great real yields, whether we're talking about the equity market or the currencies. Mm. So we we think it's a, it's a very important part of the portfolio and a, and a very important. Uh, place to be if you're worried about inflation. Let's turn to um, ESG investing. Can you put the EM index in perspective with regard to ESG? How many companies actually report in these issues and what's the quality of reporting that you see? Yeah, the, 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 there's a wide range um, and there's, there's, there's different estimates for that particular number. But, it, but in general, what you're seeing across EM is in terms of the reporting between 30 to 50%. And again, within EM, that's more developed and less developed 
countries and as you'd expect so areas north asia taiwan and korea at the upper end of that scale um, the more developing and including china the lower end so china you know in terms of disclosures is at around the 25 to 30 percent level but that's now you know what we are seeing is that there's massive growth in that if you looked at that year or two, one year or two years ago significantly less so so the rate of change is extremely fast and that's partly driven by the regulators and that's partly driven by the companies themselves and i guess that brings up the uh, repercussions of uh, commitments made at cop26 how do you see em on climate in particular uh, and do you see a rapid change towards efforts to rein in uh, emissions at a corporate level? Yes, I, I think you know COP26 is also incredibly important. That there was considerable uncertainty even days before whether you know even India would commit to a target. Uh, and the bottom line, although you know there was nothing major new, majorly new out of the majors, um, there's this significant momentum in terms of a just. just clarification exactly what the numbers are and then committing to targets um, so it's encouraging you know a lot of people were disappointed uh, we're really focused on the rate of change and where we want to be and encouraging that change um, and and that's where we come in as far as the second part of your question in terms of the corporate um, that that's our job so we you know the, the fund that we run it is very all, all about obviously we do have certain exclusions etc but really want we want to be as part of the transition and we want to be engaging we want to be a steward in terms of encouraging change we're not pointing the finger and, and making any moral obligation, but what we've done, and we've done it on the governance side for a long time, so we've, you know, the history of 25 years has always been about engagement with companies. Originally, it's obviously clearly focused on governance. And the key issue there really is that, that if you just ask for clarification of where we are in the point of time now, frankly, the rest speaks for itself. Um, so there's, there's, there's massive momentum, and, and this comes from, obviously, investors like us, but also the regulators. Clearly, the stewardship, stewardship codes across the region, including in region, um, are accelerating aggressively, and they're quite recent. So again, a more developed country like Korea kind of revamped its governance code back in 2018 and is pushing hard there. And then someone like India, later, later to the party, obviously, is just reviewed it just, just last year. Um, but nonetheless, and, and again, you know, India and COP26 did, you know, did come out with, with considerable targets, the disappointment on certain elements, but the rate of change is extremely important. And, and we see our role as just encouraging that in a very positive, humble way um, to ensure we all get to where we want to be, which is, uh, you know, as, as you say, um, you know, in, in, in a better environment. Can you give us some examples of ESG leadership across the EM? Yeah, and, and there is good leadership. I, again, it's easy to point to the more developed uh, emerging markets like Korea and Taiwan. I mean, I, I like to use the example of TSMC, um, who, who are you know real leaders in, in that space, and obviously that's reflected in the, from the various rating agencies. But it's not just the disclosure and the manner they do it. it. It's it's also the elements they're focused on. It's not just about box ticking across ESG. You know, they talk a lot about innovation, saying, look, innovation also is part of the solution. Um, and at the same time, at the end of the scale, they, you know, they, they want to be they want to be a management that 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 that's you know admired. It's literally how they quote. So you know they're very much focused on giving the data um, and and being more about uh, emerging market. There's actually strict re regulation on it, but mm -hmm. that that you know they they don't just tick the boxes. I think they go go beyond to the cause. And do you see the same in South America, which gets somewhat less attractive headlines in the political sense? Do you see the corporate sector there being ESG conscious? And, they're, they're, and, you know, whether we talk about China or, or South America or, or South Asia or even India, this is where you just get this huge range. You, you have some forward looking, perhaps more internationally savvy managements, which, you know, again, leaders, leaders in their space. Uh, and then the other end of the scale, um, you know, they're very much companies behind the curve. Um, and, and, then, and then the role is, well, look, you know, are, are you just turning your back on, on, on progress in this front? In which case, clearly, that you know they're going to be in a sort of exclusion camp for someone like us, or you know, do you just need encouragement and you're part of part of the change and actually do have plans in place? Um, and we may see significant progress from you, and perhaps you're you're in an industry that, that there's significant scope to improve. Then you know we're, we're happy to be part part of that process and encourage that process. So it's the massive range you get in the end, as we said at the outset. You know, the, the disclosure now is is really quite low. Um, so get the disclosure up, get the targets up, um, and just encourage. Would you argue that the direction of travel in improving ESG across EM is, is more important than the perfection standards that 
may be expected from more developing countries? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. And, and, and frankly, this, the battle is going to be won and lost within EM, so they're counting for two thirds of you know, global emissions. Um, so it's got to be part of the travel. If you exclude now, uh, you know, companies that don't abide by certain standards, I mean, you know, you, you're really not, not um, you know, contributing positively to, 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 to the actual what, what's trying to be achieved. I mean, the rate of change is so massive, you know, as, as you're saying, India introducing its stewardship code in 2020. You know, it's, it's really all about looking, looking at the data, looking, talking to management, see what the structure is, see what, see what the plans are. Uh, and, and then evaluating on that basis to, to exclude everything because the current standards are not DM, um, I, I don't think it's helpful. Thank you, Rob. This is the Inside Network, and we've been talking to Rob Munford on the carbon transition across emerging markets. Thank you. Thank you.